Hello, everyone. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever opened Excel and asked yourself a question, where should I start learning it? Excel is one of the most sorted tool which we use in the industry. Whether you are in finance, insurance, retail, whatever domain you are working in and whatever team you are in, Excel is something which is a bread and butter for almost everyone. So it's super important to learn Excel and learn it the right way. Hi, everyone. My name is Amit. And I come with more than 12 years of experience. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can start with Excel basics. So three reasons why you should be learning Excel is, first, it helps you store the data. So whatever data you are generating in your business, you can very easily store it without having any technical knowledge. Secondly, it helps you save a lot of time. Since you have to do a lot of data analysis, so Excel has the features like formulas, pivot tables, visualizations, with the help of which you can quickly analyze your data. Third reason, it actually helps you in the decision making. So basically, whatever data you have analyzed, whatever business decisions you have to take, Excel can help you derive insights out of it. And plus, it has the AI capability as well, which can give you quick details about your business. And lastly, so Excel in itself is a high paying job. In every organization, there are teams like MIS and data analysis teams who are actually looking out for the people who have great knowledge on Excel. So in this video, we will start with basics. So let's jump onto my screen and have a look at it. So here on my screen, you can right now see Excel. So when you open an Excel file to, to start working with Excel, the first thing is you need to have an Office 365 subscription. If you do not have Office 365 subscription, you can also go to the online version of Excel where you can use start using the Excel for free. So I already have the Office 365 subscription with me and you can here see this is how an Excel workbook looks like. So when you open it for the first time, this Excel file, everyone, is something which we call it as a workbook. And in this workbook, you will see there are multiple worksheets inside it. So sheet is like in that workbook, you can add multiple sheets as in like pages in the book. But here you don't have a limit. Like in a notebook, you have a limit, the number of pages you can have. But in Excel, you don't have any such limit. Now, when you open this Excel file at the top over here, you will see this is called as the ribbon, where you will see different options, which we will be exploring one by one. When you take a look on this, these are your cells. And these cells are something which are divided into the rows and columns. So you can see these are your columns and these are your rows over here. Now in Excel, in one sheet, you have 10,48,576 rows. And when it comes to columns, you have 16,384 columns. And yes, it's indeed a big number to manage all your data. To start off with, let's make a small set of a data in this. Suppose I want to capture the ID, name, date of joining, and salary. So now, suppose I'm working in a HR team and whatever employees I am hiring, I'm capturing all their data in my Excel sheet. So here I say the ID is one, the first employee that I hired, his name was Sam. The date of joining is this person joined on in the month of March, 21st of March, 2021. The salary is 1,000 or maybe 10,000. Second employee, his name is Leo. He joined the company on in the month of April, 15th April, 2022, and the salary is 12,000. The ID is three, the name is Tim, and this employee joined in the month of Feb, 2nd Feb, 2023, and the salary is 15,000. Now, when I'm entering this data, all of you, you will notice in this, when I'm entering the numerical data, numerical data is always right aligned. And when you enter some text data, like Sam, Leo, and Tim, so that is always left. When you take a look on the dates, now date is a field which is something present in every data set. So dates are also right aligned. Basically, Excel stores the dates in the form of numbers. Now, why numbers? We'll talk about it. But in the back end, all these dates are stored in the form of a number. And you have to be very careful that when you enter the dates, you have to ensure you enter the dates in the same format what you have on your system. So if your system settings are DDMMYY, you will be entering the dates in the same format. 
And if the format is MMDDYY, you will be entering the dates in exact same format. And Excel is you know, super intelligent. So if suppose I have entered the dates, which is in the form of DDMMYY, and I've shared it to someone who is managing those dates, and on his system, the dates are in the form of MMDDYY, Excel will automatically change the dates format. Now, if you want to do some formatting, so if you select all the headers over here, and I want to make my headers bold, I would like to add some background color, or if I would like to you know, change the alignment into center alignment, you want to apply some borders, so you will see all the options over here are given to you in the ribbon. So let's apply the borders over here. So that's how easy it is to store the data in an Excel file. So now to work around with the data, all of you, I have actually created a small set of a data which is already present in this Excel. So if I come to the next sheet, here what I've done is I have captured the data regarding you know, some sales store. So there are some you know, representatives or the salesmen in my team who have sold different type of items and we are given the units, unit price, and the other details for all the transactions that have happened. Now in this data, if I come up, if suppose you already have some data and you want to do some quick calculations into it. Say like, for example, I would like to add sales. Now sales, all of you is, which is units multiplied by unit price. So if you want to do some simple mathematical calculations, you will say equal to. Now, equal to is something which tells Excel that you are starting a formula. Now I will say 62 multiplied by 4.99. And here you will notice sales is something which has been calculated. Right now you can see the sale that has been calculated is being shown to me only for the first entry. And if I want, this formula should be applied till the last. So if you just come to the corner of this cell and you double click on this, so I will do a double click. You will notice the formula gets dragged down and all the calculations are done. Now, once we have done some calculations, now on this data, so for example, I want to highlight. something. So we have a concept called as conditional formatting. So if suppose I am in the column of sales and I would like to highlight the top three values, right? Where we have made the top three sales in the data. So if I come into this on the home tab over here, you have an option of conditional formatting. I will say I want to highlight the sales, but using top bottom rules. And if I say I want to highlight top 10 items, the option says top 10, but I will say I want to only highlight top three values, and you can choose the color of your choice to represent the data. So here we can quickly identify the top three values of the sales that we have made. One transaction was done by Susan, another one was done by Matthew, and the third one was done by Thoughts. So here we can see the three top three transactions over here. Similarly, if suppose I come over here in the unit price, we have an option of conditional formatting, wherein what we can do is, I can say I would like to apply some color scales. So in the color scales, it gives you a color gradient. The values which are high, they are green in color. The values which are in the middle, they are in the yellow color. And the bottom values are red in color. So now talking about this pivot tables, if we want, we can actually convert this whole data in the form of a table. Now, table is something which can give you some quick ways to add some light, you know, to add some good formatting to your data that you have created. So if you want to do that, if I click on insert, over here, you will see an option of table. You also have a shortcut for that. Once you have selected the data, you can press control T. So if I now click on OK, you can notice a nice look and feel has been given to my data. And if you come and click on the table design option, over here you will notice we have the options like, you know, you can choose some different colors to enhance the overall look and feel of this data that we have created. So this is just for giving a better representation and plus it has some more benefits as well, which is which help you in organizing this data. Now, if you have already created this data, now you would like to do certain analysis. I would like to understand how many units have I sold in each region? 
So in that case, what I can do is I will just keep my cursor anywhere in this table and I'm going to say insert and we will insert a pivot table. Now pivot table is a great functionality which helps you in organizing and summarizing your data. So if I click over here on pivot table and I click on OK. So here you can notice a pivot table is something which has been added. Now, when you come into the pivot table, you will see the list of all the fields that you have in your data. And you will see there is an option of rows, columns, values, filters. So if I drag region into the rows, you can see the region names have come row wise. And if I would have dragged the region in the columns, you will notice all the region names will come in the column. I'll keep the region in the rows and I'm going to drag units into the values. So here we can see pivot table has quickly summarized the data and I can see total units that we have sold in each of the regions. By default, the calculation is sum. In case if you want to change the calculation, instead of sum, if you would like to showcase average. So I can change that to average and I can see average units that we have sold in each of the regions. I can also drag sales as well, where we will be able to see how much sales we got. So region wise, we can see total units and the total sales that we have done. On top of that, if I bring the field of item into the columns, now see the pivot table breaks up. Now in each region, since we have sold different items, the pivot table has become much more broader. And to have a better visibility for now, we can also drag item into the rows itself. So here we can see in central region, we have these were the items that were sold and we are given the average of the units in each of the for each of the item in each region. And plus, we can also see some grand total. So we also have the overall summary in the last. So what I'll do now over here, everyone is in this pivot table, suppose I remove the item and let me remove the average units. So here we can see one pivot table in which we are trying to showcase how many units were sold or how much sale we got in each of the region. I'll make a copy of this pivot table. You can just select all the cells and press control C that will copy the pivot table. You can paste it on the right side. And now what I'll do is I'm going to remove the region from here and instead I will add Rep. So now we can see how much sale each representative has given to me. So in case I have to give some incentives based on the sales, so this pivot table can actually help me in doing that decision. -making. If I make one more copy of the same pivot table, and in this pivot table, I will remove the region and I will bring item. So pivot table is all drag and drop. So here we can see how much sales we generated across the different items. Now, definitely these numbers look good to me, but if I convert them into the form of visuals, do you all think it will be much more easier to understand and analyze? So let's do that. So if I select the first pivot table, I'm going to say insert and I will insert a pie chart. And here you can notice a pie chart will be created. So this pie chart makes it much more interesting for me that, okay, we can see the share of East is on the higher side, right? The, the share of the green part, which is West is the lowest. I can update a title over here, which is sales by region. So we can make this chart a bit smaller. We can add another pivot chart over here where in this, I will say insert, I'm going to add a bar chart. So here we got the second chart. What I can do is you can call it as sales by rep. And then we can add third one. Here, if I will say insert, I'm going to insert maybe column chart. So 
So here we got sales by ID. Now what we can do is these three charts that we have got, if I want, I can select all three one by one. So you have to press control key, click on the chart and select all the three charts one by one. I will say control X, control X to cut the chart. I will paste them onto a new sheet. We can zoom this out. We have zoom in, zoom out buttons over here. So I will zoom out a bit to organize the charts in one full screen. So here we can see a quick summary of my business data has been generated. A report has been created. I can select multiple cells. And if you want, you can merge and center from here. Merge and center means combining all the cells into one. So I can call it as sales report. So I have made it center line. So you have the options of alignment over here. We can make it as bold. We have the option to increase the font size. You can do that. I can add some background colors. See, so I'm selecting multiple cells in the background and I'm going to add some color over here as well. This is where we can see a nice small report has been created, which I can send it to my manager based on which he or she can take some decisions. Now, once we have done some working into it, if you want to save this file, I can simply click on file and it will give me an option to save. So I'll click on save. And wherever you want to save this file, you just have to give the name. So in my case, I'm saving it in my documents folder. I'll call it as practice file. And I'll save this. So here we can see whatever work we have done has been completely saved. I hope everyone, you all would have enjoyed watching this video and would have got some substantial key takeaways. So do not forget to like and subscribe our channel for more such informative videos. Thank you all of you.